let's learn stochastic calculus in five minutes. So recall that x of t was Brownian motion, so we're going to need that. Brownian motion. Now the definition of a stochastic integral is something like this. Wt equals integral from 0 to t f of tau dx tau. So this is the notation for the integral. And now I'm going to define the integral. It's the limit as n goes to infinity, the sum i equals 1 to n of f t j minus 1 times x t j minus x t j minus 1. All right. So now we have the notation for the integral and the definition using a limit. If you remember calculus, this should be sort of familiar. It's, it's not exactly the same, but it, it's the same sort of feel where you're doing rectangles and doing a sum and taking the limit. One of the interesting things here is that this f is evaluated at t to the j minus 1. And that means, from a financial point of view, this is non-anticipatory. So when we think about what this means, this is the part where we do something in our portfolio, and then here is the result. So at, at time j, is it's one time step in the future, and j minus 1 is the present. This shows what happened after we took some action in the portfolio. And as the limit, as n goes to infinity, we can be hedging and changing our portfolio faster and faster. But because we're always evaluating what we're doing at time j minus 1, then this result goes from j minus 1 to j to see to show what happens that means we're not at anti we're never anti anticipating the market so that's an important philosophical point so here's the definition this is a little bit unwieldy so there's actually a nice shorthand so the shorthand is dw equals um, f of t dx. And you can see here we're just taking the derivative both sides. So nothing too surprising. Another thing we can do is we can write this integral with a random part and a deterministic part. So something like this. Wt equals integral 0 to t g of tau d tau plus integral of 0 to t f of tau dx tau. All right, and so here we have this left side is deterministic, and here the right side is the random side. So this, this part here is just the same, but now, and we, and we interpret the, the right side here as this, this limit by the definition, and the left side the deterministic part, this is regular calculus. So we have a function here where it's part regular calculus, part stochastic calculus, and that, that's all good. You can imagine there's also a, a shorthand here. So it's dw equals g of t dt. And the other part's just f of t dx, like before. So again, we have the deterministic and the random. And that's the shorthand. OK, so now we have a definition of stochastic integrals. And we can presumably use the definition and work out problems. But that's very tedious. So we'd actually like a, a method of computation. So in regular calculus, if we had um, f of x equals x squared, then we could say df equals 2x dx. This is regular calculus. Can we just do that? It turns out, no. We can't just do that. So we have to come up with new rules of doing derivatives in stochastic calculus. So what are the new rules? 
the rule is Ito's lemma. So Ito's lemma, I'm going to do a very hand wavy derivation here. So let's start with a Taylor expansion. I'm putting this in quotes because this is a little bit uh, fake. So what's f of x plus dx? Just doing a Taylor expansion and imagining this dx is a an actual value. We'd say that's f of x plus first derivative. times dx plus second order stuff d squared f dx squared plus higher order stuff and now the higher order stuff we can imagine goes to zero that's not too hard to to think about the next thing is a rule of thumb that dx squared equals dt. So why would that be? This actually it makes a lot of sense to me. So this isn't this is not actually true. This is this is false, but you know, this makes sense because of a lot of the calculations we've been doing with um, variance and quadratic variance. of the Brownian motion. And so if you've worked out these calculations, this should be totally unsurprising. And so if we plug this in, and we imagine that f of x plus dx minus f of x, that's kind of like df. Then we can imagine this is df equals df dx dx plus a half d squared f dx squared and instead of dx squared we get dt and there you go there's Ito's lemma so this is how we can do calculations and so in our example so we had f of x equals x squared now what can we do what's df so df equals df dx, which is 2x dx, plus a half times the second derivative of f with respect to x. So what's that? First is 2x, second is 2, and then dt. So in other words, df equals 2x dx plus dt. So there's our example it worked out. We can do calculations now. So Ito's lemma, it's pretty neat. Good to know.